So mitigation of climate change and adaptation to climate change are critical in the context of agriculture, considering agriculture is such a big contributor to greenhouse gases as well as several other environmental effects uh, like eutrophication. We want to be able to make climate uh, uh, agriculture more climate friendly, environment friendly. and. Surprisingly, climate adaptation, uh, climate change mitigation also include uh, some of the things like biofuels, for example. And we are now talking here about food availability, security, nutrition, and so on. And biofuels, of course, w can consume uh, food crops, which can make stability, price, and availability uh, difficult for some groups, uh, for example. So climate adaptation can be made uh, friendly even for biofuels as well as for nutrition uh, uh, and so on. Uh, here is an example. First generation biofuels compete with food crops, land, water, and animal feed. I will show what these are in the next slide. Second generation biofuels can compete with other farm resources and third generation biofuels we want to make sure that they do not compete with food production at all. Right? What are these things? First generation biofuels usually refers to uh, ethanol produced from sugar rich crops such as sugar beet, sugar cane, sweet sorghum, starch rich crops such as corn, wheat and cassava and to biodiesel made from oilseed crops like soybean, sunflower, rapeseed, uh, palm or animal fat and pure plant oils. In most cases these crops can also be used for uh, used as food or feed which means my fuels are going to compete with uh, food security and food availability uh, and so on. <clears throat> Second generation biofuels can be made from non-edible parts of the plants like corn husks, stalks, forestry residue, perennial grasses, animal and municipal waste. That would already take away a lot of the competition with food and feed. Third generation biofuels are those that do not compete with food crops and uh, or land such as algae based, algae based uh, fuels. Uh, Okay, so we talked about uh, sustainable aquaculture uh, and so on, where we showed some of the algae. So that's another way to do uh, biofuels without competing with food production at all. There are lots of ideas about using degraded land and so on and so forth, but to do them at scale has not been demonstrated yet. And all these have to be, of course, uh, shown to work at scale and be uh, carbon neutral or uh, even carbon negative in some cases. Okay, So that leads us to think about nutrition sensitive climate change adaptation. Direct nutrition interventions to build resilience to climate change impacts. Okay, So we will just look at a schematic like this from the book where uh, the framework illustrating the pathways through which climate change affects nutrition is shown. Here are the climate extremes, variability and change uh, feeding into household food security and household, household nutrition security. Let's uh, go bottom up and then look at where the climate impacts feed in. So we are dealing with potential sources. There are feedbacks between all of these again. Uh, economic, political and ideological structures that affect uh, food security and nutrition security. Formal and non-formal institutions are involved. Uh, insufficient household food access inadequate maternal and child care and feeding practices uh, overlapping into nutrition insecurity uh, insufficient health services and unhealthy environment I should have said this is household food insecurity and household nutrition insecurity okay these lead to inadequate dietary intake disease so they feed back with each other and inadequate uh, maternal and child care and feeding practices feed to maternal and child nutrition, uh, to a child undernutrition, which then feeds to short term conse consequences in mortality, morbidity, and disability, and also medium term consequences uh, in adult size, intellectual ability, economic productivity, reproductive performance, metabolic and cardiovascular diseases all of which then feed back to uh, 
maternal and child undernutrition, diseases, um, household food insecurity and nutrition insecurity, and uh, the uh, institutional structures and potential resources. Overriding all these is, of course, climate forcing. Okay? What are some of the measures? There are evidence-based high return nutrition investments that include promotion of good nutrition, care and hygiene practices such as breastfeeding, complementary feeding for infants beyond six months of age, improved hygiene practices including hand washing and deworming processes, micronutrient supplementation for young children and their mothers for example periodic vitamin A supplements and therapeutic zinc supplements for diarrhea management especially we talked about uh, loss of zinc and iron in the crops under high CO2 environment which has to be uh, taken care of as well coming going into the uh, future provision of micronutrients through food fortification for all for example salt iodization and iron fortification which is going to become more and more critical therapeutic feeding for m malnourished children with special foods including the prevention or treatment for moderate undernutrition and the treatment of severe undernutrition with ready-to-use therapeutic foods okay so let me leave that uh, this podcast here and uh, come to sustainable climate resilient and nutrient sensitive agricultural development in the next podcast so now we are transitioning for from climate impact on food to uh, the multiple levels in which the food system uh, governance and institutional non-institutional structures affect household uh, undernutrition uh, food insecurity and nutritional insecurity. So you can see the complex uh, form in which planetary health has to be dealt with. Climate change affecting food production itself and its cascade into uh, the uh, household level uh, food insecurity and nutritional insecurity. So any climate mitigation, adaptation, agricultural production uh, environmental impact all these things cannot be treated separately at all especially from human health outcomes and food uh, utilization and uh, nutrition okay so very complicated but obviously something that is now inevitable in terms of um, maintaining the whole system under planetary health <laughs>